Now, we, we talked about um, uh, the, the emergency, um, setting a, an emergency fund. So my next question is a component of financial wellness is making sure that we can handle financial setbacks. So what can people do to build resilience um, in times where shocks happen to your financial, to your finances? It's a great question because I think that um, if we had that, the, the perfect answer, <laughs> it would alleviate a lot of stress for a lot of us. I don't think that even, um, and Barbara had mentioned it earlier, it may be small changes. Uh, you know, a lot of financial experts will say, you know, we should have a one year worth of uh, salary saving. I think all of that in, in reality, if, if, if that was attainable, all of us would have that. Um, so I think that making small changes and little things to get money into a savings account and leaving them in a position where they are, they're separate from setting up your retirement account and they're separate from setting up that kind of long term. And I'm also a big fan of having a goal. If you have a goal when you set up that emergency, it, it, and it's an attainable goal, even a fun goal, you take some of this money and I'm going to go to Disney World with it, you're already in the habit of saving it. Can be used to the saving process, and, and that helps move things along. But small changes, really, I think, are the key to starting to establish that that emergency savings. Great, and and Pam, I wanted to add. Uh, so, how can someone set up? Um, kind of like these emergency funds, because I think a lot of the issues that people have is they know that emergency fund is important. Uh, they don't necessarily know how can they start. Like, so what are some of the options that people can do to start an emergency fund? And, and what Kim had mentioned, it's very, it can start really small, but how does someone actually start? Yeah, I'm happy to answer that. Um, I, I think the emergency fund might be daunting because we think we're here, we have three months, six months of all this money in the bank. I'm like, I, I, six months of my mortgage payment is enough to make me kind of all over. But if you start out with just a little bit amount of money and it accumulates over the year and year and year, um, and I think with technology, the easiest way is to um, come on into or go into your financial institution, preferably, sorry, the savings account, piece of savings, and we also offer, a lot of institutions also are, uh, offer what's called a flood account. So if you want to specifically have an emergency fund and a vacation fund, you can have one of each. Go online, set up your payroll to do a payroll deduction right into that account, every single payroll. And if you don't, you don't even, after you set the account up, you go onto your payroll and you set that up, done. You just can kind of let that money go in there. You kind of forget, you, I always want to say you forget about it, you can delete it. That is the easiest, easiest way. And the other way, the other, again, you know, small steps, um, I have a jar and I um, fill it with, I, empty my change out of my wallet every day or whatever it gets too heavy or whatever. And my goal is to go to the Olympics. So that's my Olympic jar. And that's what I call it. And my niece has one too. She wants to come with me. And it's just my Olympic jar. And so it has it has a purpose. So I'm inspired to put that change in there every couple of days instead of just so it's like I'm more inspired to use a twenty dollar bill and put the change and put it in the jar. And I'm looking forward to it being full. So those are, you know, those are the two ways that you can start with the emergency fund. All right. Barb? Um, well, in addition to savings is where you build resilience. I think it's always good to keep your debt as low as possible. You know, there's a metric that you never want to have your monthly consumer debt payments be more than 20% of your monthly take-home pay. So lower is better if you can get it to be 5% or 10%. Um, certainly not near that danger zone of 20%. Also, having adequate insurance for the big risks in our lives, um, making sure that you're properly protected health insurance, life insurance, disability insurance, and an adequate liability insurance on your, your property, your home, or your renters, or your, um, your car insurance. I think that's all important, too. Great. 